studies we thought uh, might be interesting for you as uh, journalists. Uh, the main title is Arrhythmias in the Real World. Um, we have different topics to discuss today. Um, after, uh, we, we will allow one to three short questions after each presentation. And uh, I, I would ask the, the speakers uh, to join me after, after their presentations. And in the end, we, can, we, we, we are here to, to answer uh, your questions, if there are additional questions. Uh, I would like to um, introduce to you Professor Harald uh, Darius. He is uh, one of the official spokespersons of the ESC, and he is especially here with respect to the antithrombotic parts of uh, this uh, session. I would like to, to welcome Professor Gestor Knut, uh, or, and he will uh, give a presentation about the association between leisure time, physical activity, and atrial fibrillation in the general population. It's a longitudinal study, and we will hear what he has to say to us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no, normally, uh, everybody talks about ex physical exercise being good for your health. And obviously, that is the conclusion which I shall end up with. But there may be some adverse effects. And uh, one, one of those is uh, uh, the, the subject studied in this presentation. Um, we, um, uh, we have to look at a large group of subjects. And in Norway, we have, uh, over many years, people have participated in health surveys and they have given information about their exercise habits, uh, their uh, drinking patterns, their smoking patterns, their educational level, uh, and uh, we have measured a lot of uh, biological parameters. Uh, and that was done in the 80s and the 90s. So we could merge uh, the, the databases, uh, so we had uh, more than half a million subjects uh, in whom we knew the baseline data. And um, we know uh, from anecdotal episode, uh, evidence that uh, high endurance ex uh, exercise or sports performers, they have a high rate of atrial fibrillation. Um, we know it from Finnish orienteers, some 10, uh, 10 to 15 years uh, back in time. We know it from American physicians who have, stu have been studied, and we know it from Norwegian long-distance uh, ski runners. Uh, but uh, we, do not, we do not know whether this uh, holds true also for the general population and at lower levels of exercise. Uh, so. Uh, we divided all those subjects into four classes of exercise. Uh, the, class one uh, included the ones who perf preferred to watch TV in the leisure time. Uh, class two did uh, worked in their gardens and walked and uh, were active but not exercise, he exercising heavily. Class three had even more exercise uh, and class four were the competitors who trained several times per week. Oh, pop, pop. Um, there's always a problem with defining uh, uh, that a person has got atrial fibrillation. Most of the patients who have atrial fibrillation, they are, have a cardiac disease. They may have high blood pressure, they may have heart failure, myocardial infarct. But we were looking for those who, uh, who, who didn't, were healthy, completely healthy. And uh, when a healthy person an otherwise healthy person contracts atrial fibrillation, we call that lone atrial fibrillation. So this, is, uh, uh, this study uh, regards only the lone fibrillation patients. Um, uh, uh, Flecainide is a drug that is prescribed mainly or almost only for atrial fibrillation. And that drug is dangerous if you have a heart disease. So, um, so it is prescribed mainly or only for those who have lone fibrillation. So we, and we have a prescription registry in Norway, so we could pick up those who, um, uh, who use flecainide um, uh, uh, over the last years 
and we could match uh, those with the, their baseline data. So we could see uh, whether there was an exercise gradient in the chances that a person used flecainide. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we found that the more uh, people were exercising uh, in their leisure time at baseline, the higher was the risk that they, uh, that, that they tw uh, 10 to 20 years later on uh, were prescribed flecainide, a drug for low atrial fibrillation. And uh, there, there was a gradual increase through, through the classes for males, uh, with the 2.8 uh, hazard ratio for those who were in the highest exercise class. Among the female, we didn't see the same pattern. No difference between classes 1, 2 and 3, and there were too few females who were very, very active. Uh, today, that picture has changed, so perhaps in 10 years we shall be able to fill in data on exercise class 4 for females too, but so far not. We, we, we can't. And these data are adjusted for age and height and body mass index and education, and we have also checked for several other parameters, and it seems to hold true. So the conclusion is that heavy physical activity at least doubles the multi-adjusted hazard ratio for atrial fibrillation in males. For lone atrial fibrillation, I should add. And there is probably no threshold <laughs> effect, and the relationship is uncertain or not uh, present in females. But, uh, of course, the beneficial effects of physical exercise by far uh, out, out, outweigh uh, the adverse effects and the risk of AF is small compared to uh, the, the lower risk of coronary heart disease, the longer long, longevity, uh, the higher quality of life among those who are exercising. But this is sort of one adverse effect. Thank you. So thank you so much. Uh, quite provocative. Heavy exercise leads to more atrial fibrillation. Um, some questions out of the audience, please. Mike is coming. Yeah. Hi, um, Ed Sussman with the mid page today. Uh, are, are there any, um, does uh, the drug taken for treatment of atrial fibrillation in these otherwise healthy individuals affect their performance? Uh, Flecainide is a drug that is accepted by most who, who train because it, it doesn't disturb their performance. Uh, so uh, there might be a risk that um, uh, those who are active, they would, be, they would be more embarrassed by their atrial fibrillation and they would more often ask for flecainide. So, uh, so that could be a confounder. So we checked there is another drug that could be used and that is termed sotalol. That is a beta blocker with additional antiarrhythmic effects. And that drug uh, gives you uh, lead in your shoes. Uh, you, your body is, feels like it's heavy and uh, it's very hard to run. Uh, so uh, exercise performers hate that drug. And we found exactly the same gradient among those who used uh, Sotalol, uh, with increasing chance of using Sotalol uh, with increasing physical level. So we believe that this, this holds true, but of course all those looking backwards type of studies, uh, they, they, they are uncertain. Um, have you checked, uh, looked at the um, relationship between, in these patients who have atrial fibrillation as to their risk of uh, stroke or other um, problems? No, but those with lone AF, uh, they were less frequently smokers, uh, they had lower weight, uh, they had lower body mass index, uh, they had more education, they, they drank more wine. Uh, they, they, they were the su successful persons of the society who maintained their health. So, so I do think they do well. So, is there any particular harm to, uh, you know, aside from the, their feeling of unease um, when they have this that 
um, you know, is, yes. is of concern. Okay, they are embarrassed because they have troubles when they compete, uh, and that is their main concern. We know that the, the, the mortality, the chance of dying, doubles in atrial fibrillation patients as a group, but we do not know for sure whether that also affects those in the low atrial fibrillation group. So I don't know, but it's definitely not healthy. And, and just just one more question: Is is there an exercise-related cause to atrial fibrillation in this group? It, it's very temp tempting to believe so because. Uh, when, when, when you exercise over a long time, prolonged time and at very high level, then your atria will have to work harder because uh, the car cardiac uh, work increases. So it's easy to assume that, but of course that's speculation. Further questions? Further questions? Uh, if this is not the case, thank you.